I'm going to call this uh, meeting to order of the regular meeting in front of the Yuba City City Council. Um, got some information to read. <clears throat> Governor has declared a state of emergency, emergency to exist in California as a result of the threat of COVID-19. The governor also issued Executive Order N-33-20, which directs Californians to follow public health directives, including canceling large gatherings. The executive order also allows local legislative bodies to hold meetings via conference calls while still meeting state transparency requirements. The public's health and well-being are the top priority for the city of Yuba City, and you are urged to take all appropriate health and safety precautions. How to participate in the virtual meeting. This meeting is utilizing Zoom application for this live broadcast. For this meeting, we will be using the question and answers functionality of this tool in order to accommodate public comment. On your device, the questions and answers section of the app is located at the bottom of your Zoom screen. For those that would like to comment during this meeting, please enter your comment into the question and answers portion of the app and be sure to state the item you will be commenting on. During the public comment of each item, staff will read aloud the comments provided by the public for all to hear for that specific item. Be timely with your questions as once the public hearing is closed, or the item has been discussed by the council and voted on, no more comments will be accepted for that item. May I have roll call, please? Mayor Boomgarden? Here. Vice Mayor Shaw? Here. Council Member Espindola? Here. Council Member Harris? Here. Council Member Kirchner? Here. All right, please uh, rise. Uh, we'll have invocation. Um, by our city attorney. Let us bow our heads. Our Father, we thank thee for the opportunity we have to gather here today. We ask thee that thy spirit will be with us and that thou may be able to provide us with wisdom and guidance to make difficult decisions as they may come up, that we may do so with compassion and love for our community and inspiration from above. We pray in the name of thy son. Amen. We have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I'd like to ask Mr. Thomas Burns to lead us in the pledge, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Uh, City Attorney's report on closed session items. Mr. City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There was no reportable action taken in closed session. Thank you. Any agenda modifications? Seeing or hearing none, uh, we'll go ahead and approve the agenda. First items, item number one, ceremonial under ceremonial presentations, uh, we're um, going to have a presentation by our Yuba Sutter Chamber of Commerce, uh, and that will be led by their CEO, uh, a good partner with the city of Yuba City, um, Marnie Sanders. Good evening, Council. Can you hear me okay? Thumbs up. Great. I feel like I have a command center here because I have Zoom so I can see the slides and then you. So there's lots of opportunity for disaster, but we're just going <laughs> to forge on ahead. And I want to say thank you so much for having uh, having me here tonight to present on how the chamber's doing. And I want to uh, first start by extending a big thank you to the city of Yuba City for your partnership with the chamber. Uh, for folks out there listening, uh, you may not know this, but uh, we are housed out of that little John Madden house uh, that is owned by the city. And so we are so very grateful to, to have that space to business and and we just absolutely love it so I want to say thank you and a quick uh, shout out to Mayor Boomgarden who was one of our presenters this morning at our government affairs committee so thank you for um, giving our community a quick update on on where the city set so without further ado I'll have you go to the next slide and I'm getting feedback sorry uh, let me turn this down Okay, I can hardly see, but it looks like this, this slide did shift. Um, tonight, I just want to talk a little bit about our COVID response. 
Uh, and then I'll focus on our three core areas of support. Uh, of work, and that is education, advocacy, and promotion. And then we'll just take a little look at our financial outlook, how we did last year, and, and our look ahead in 2021. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, I, I think we're all familiar with this word by now. Um, I know I've used it. We've all used it. I think it can go down on the books as the most used word. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying, okay, there we go, I see it. Uh, pivot, uh, we've all had to pivot in some way, shape or form in our businesses, in our personal lives, we've had to, to make some shifts. And, and so I'm going to um, ask to move to the next slide. And it kind of reminded me of back in the day when this young girl was a basketball honker and if I could tell her how to pivot, she probably would not have been a bench warmer. Um, and I'm not sure about the hairdo either, but we'll we'll talk about that at another time. But in all is that you? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> oh, I know I've aged a bit. No, no, no. <laughs> that is that is me, and I was I was a bench warmer, uh, but I think I could really hold my own now with a. Uh, that pivot motion. So really relating what pivot means in basketball terms, we've got we've got that um, that fixed point, that fixed position with the one foot, and then we just shift around. And and that's what businesses have done. That fixed spot. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. That fixed position. That's the mission of our organization, the vision that we have. And at the chamber, our mission is to support the business community, be the voice for that business community. But we're shifting, we're changing the scope of our work, how we conduct business, how we get information and resources to, to our members. Next slide, please. And uh, as I said at the beginning, um, our focuses are on education, advocacy, and promotion. So a little bit about what we've done in the area of education. We are the catalyst for business growth. And what that means is we provide information and services. And sorry, excuse me, still getting feedback. I can't get my other device to mute. Okay. Uh, we provide information and services to, and resources to our businesses to help them be successful in those businesses. And so this last year, I think we really grew in that area of support. Um, and one way we did that, it was providing webinars to our business community. Uh, since June, we've held 18 different webinars. They've ranged from how to navigate through that PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, the, um, the IDLE, the economic, uh, the economic, <laughs> The idol. Let's just go with that. <laughs> all these acronyms, and uh, Councilman Shaw can relate to all the acronyms too. Um, so, how to navigate through those? Do I apply? How do I apply? Do I get forgiveness with the PPP? All the way to how do I promote myself on social media? A lot of businesses really haven't utilized those tools. How to be your own graphic designer? They've had to slim down on their budget. So, we're giving them those tools and the resources that they need to be successful in their businesses. And then I'll shift over to advocacy. Uh, most of you know that we host government affairs committee meetings every month, and that's an opportunity for our leaders and our business community to come together to discuss the issues and challenges that uh, we all face in our community, and um, an opportunity to find some solutions in there. So when COVID hit, we decided that maybe we needed to convene more often, so we got together on a weekly basis, and so we called that the Yuba Sutter Pulse meeting. It was, again, just a way to connect our leaders and our business community together so, so you all could hear from, from those businesses what was going on um, and could address, address those issues and those challenges in the best way that we could. And we know it's been very difficult for everyone. Our hands have felt tied in many ways. And we're all in this together. Um, but in any case, we, we held those meetings. Uh, we also are members of the United Chamber Advocacy Network. And essentially what that is, is a, um, 
we have a lobbyist that is working on our behalf at the state capitol and it's uh we're one of six chambers that are part of this group they're all chambers that are in communities that look a lot like ours and so i feel like that representation is really solid and it really makes sense for um representing our business community so and we'll continue that relationship and it's been very good so far and then in the area of promotion most people know chambers are all about the ribbon cuttings and the business after hours and those kinds of events and those came to a screeching halt when covid hit uh, but so again we had to pivot and figure out a way that we could continue to help promote business connect people uh, through networking opportunities. So we took some of that online virtually through Zoom and we've all, all had more than enough of this, the Zoom world, uh, but we've done that. Uh, we normally host the Taste of Yuba Sutter event. Uh, we could not do that. Instead, we had the Yuba Sutter Eats event, which was a virtual event. We had this beautiful guide created to help promote eating local you know, picking up takeout. So our community knew what was going on in our restaurant community, where they could pick up a great dish to bring home to the family. So we did that. We also held a campaign called Twinkle Twinkle Little Shop. And again, that was to encourage shop local. We had folks um, send in receipts where they shopped locally, the, the small mom and pop shops is what we were looking for. And then we had a, um, we had a drawing for, um, for prizes. Um, a wonderful uh, donor give us the money to purchase these gift cards uh, to uh, to give out as prizes. So again, just keep pushing out, shop local, eat local. And I really think our community has stepped up. They, they're thinking differently about how they shop and where they eat out. And, uh, and it's, it's reflected in our community. Can you guys hear that feedback? I have to shut this part off. I'm not going to really be able to see the slide. Okay. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right. Speaking of slides, next slide, please. Okay. Yes, you can't keep a, a good chamber down. I think. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I knew I was going to have technical difficulties. Uh, all right. Uh, the chamber really, uh, you know, like a lot of businesses, we we had some areas of struggle, but um, we were able to to really come out in pretty good shape. So next slide, please. Uh, this is just a little snapshot of how we did last year. So we cut our expenses, uh, like a lot of businesses, they had to cut off the fat and uh, and that's what we did. And so we were able to reduce our expenses by 16%, but we were also able to increase our revenue by 16%. And that really is a testament to, uh, to the support that we get from our partners like the city of Yuba City and um, our membership base who were committed to continue to support the chamber, knowing that the work that we do it will benefit them. And so we really appreciate that. But we are in really good, solid standing, and uh, I think we have a bright future ahead. I think we all do. I think our community has been incredibly resilient, and uh, and I'm so proud to be at where I am to, to watch our community as we as we come out of COVID. Okay, next slide, please. I thought I would give you a little <clears throat> snapshot of, of what our major revenue sources look like. Obviously, we are a membership organization, so prim that's primarily going to be our main source of revenue. And you'll see from uh, our fiscal year 2018 and 19, uh, we grew this last year by a little over 10% in our revenues. Uh, we had made a decision; we hadn't cre we had not increased our uh, annual dues in a number of years, so we made a slight increase to the business, which was pretty minimal for them. But when it's all added up, it was a pretty significant um, amount for the chamber. And, and it really did help this last year without even knowing. 
And then our next major source of revenue are the events that we host. And obviously, we were not able to do Taste of Yuba Sutter or the Swan Festival. We did get gala in. That was several weeks before we, we shut down. I think a lot of people remember that being the last party that they attended before the shutdown. So we, I guess we went out with a bang. And we really did. That gala, we raised $30,000 more than we had in the recent years. So it was a, an amazing success and, again, provided us um, some of that cushion that we needed to, to, weather, to weather this storm. And then the other income category, we, we get small grants and donations. Uh, there's uh, grants that we receive to do our Leadership Uber Sutter program, things of that nature. And then you can see we did see a, a pretty good drop in new membership, but I think that makes good sense. It was COVID, and uh, people were slimming down their budgets. They weren't thinking about joining chambers and, and uh letting money go out the door at that time. But um, in the last week and a half, we've gotten six new chamber members. So I, I, I'm hoping that's a good sign of things to come and, and the community's feeling, feeling better. They're, uh, they're feeling like we're gonna get out of this. And we are. Uh, I don't think we thought we'd be here uh, almost an entire year later, but, uh, but here we still are. Okay, and the next slide, please. <clears throat> and then I'll just quickly go over some of our activities that we're, we're getting into this year, our special initiatives. Um, restaurant Association. So as you all know, restaurants are among the hardest hit industries during COVID. And, uh, and I've had lots of conversations with our restaurant owners over the course of the last year. And a few of them had indicated uh, their desire to have a restaurant association that was more locally based that could provide a, a larger voice for them locally. A lot of them belong to California Restaurant Association, which is a wonderful association, but sometimes don't quite repre represent our smaller communities in the way that our restaurants would like to see. So we have come together, the chamber and a number of restaurant owners. We've invited a few other potential stakeholders to the table to have conversations about how to bring this association to fruition. Uh, we would like to see that the restaurant association would be under the umbrella of the Chamber of Commerce, and we would provide that membership opportunity to our restaurants, and they would get a unique set of benefits that make the most sense for, for their specific challenges and needs. So I hope to have more report to report in the coming months uh, uh, regarding that. And then uh, film commission. I don't know how many of you have um, heard about film commissions in communities, but just to give you an idea uh, of what they're all about, they're, they are the organization in your community that attracts productions and films to your community. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, when you bring a production, you bring a film to your community, you are bringing people who are staying in your hotels, eating in your restaurants, um, having catering brought on their location sites, they're using our services, and all sorts of different kinds of vendor opportunities there, having an impact on our economics here locally. So we're exploring some options there. I've reached out to a number of film commissions. Actually, I just I had a meeting with Shasta County Film Commission, and she had said to me about 10 years ago they didn't have a film commission and they were tracking economic impact from production, and it was about $100,000 in a year. Now that they have a film commission and they have a person dedicated to promoting the area to the film industry, they see over a million dollar economic impact to their community by having having those productions come to town. So again, something that we're exploring, we're uh, in conversation with, with partners and potential stakeholders with that. And then workforce development, I do need to give a shout out to Jackie Spillman. She actually pulled a group of, I don't know, a couple dozen people together on Zoom from the education sector, from the business sector, and the chamber to start a conversation on how we can connect the dots uh, between education 
and a skilled workforce and connecting that skilled workforce to our business. Uh, those kinds of conversations have just begun, but I'm really excited that the chamber's at the table and I'm hopeful that we'll have much more to report on that. And then I know I'm taking up a lot of time. Uh, you guys have some exciting things on your agenda this evening, so I'm looking forward to hearing about that. Uh, membership development. We're going to host a membership drive in May. I think now's the time. We haven't done it in a long time. But not only do we want to increase our membership base, we want to educate the public on what a chamber is about, that we're not just the ribbon cuttings and the networking events. We're much more than that. Uh, so I think that'll be a great opportunity, hopefully, to create some buzz around the chamber. And then just our other events and program areas, of course, we'll continue to bring the webinars. Uh, we appreciate our, our membership with the United Chamber Advocacy Network, and we'll continue that. Leadership Yuba Sutter got off to a great start in 2019, came to a screeching halt with COVID. So they'll be finishing their class hopefully at, uh, this spring and we'll be bringing a new class on in the fall if all goes well. But when COVID hit, they pivoted too. They jumped right in and they got involved in getting food out to people in need. So they've really done a fantastic job and uh, we just love that program and Hopefully, we truly are creating leaders for the future here in Yuba Sutter. And then, uh, Gala, June 11th, we've moved it. It's happening. I just know it. Uh, so, hope, we'll keep you posted on that. Fingers crossed. And then, uh, we still have plans to do Taste of Yuba Sutter in the fall, also Swan Festival. And then, just to get back to life and get out there and shake hands and give hugs at our our networking events, and we all miss that human connection so much, and, and uh, so we're very much looking forward to that. And the last slide, I just want to say thank you so much, Council, for allowing me to be here tonight, and, uh, and thank you again for your partnership, and that's it for me, unless you have any questions. And I'm sorry for my technical difficulties. I put my iPad on the ground, and I can still hear the feedback, and I'm kicking it, trying to present. Yeah. We, we saw you trying to kick it. <laughs> uh, Wade or Grace, any comments, questions for Marnie? Oh, I'm, well, I'm, uh, I'm excited that you're uh, working at uh, doing uh, the gala on June. Yes, yes. I think maybe that will be, it was our party going out and it'll be our party coming back in. This is this is what I'm really hoping for. And you know what? It's, it will be the perfect opportunity to celebrate the resiliency of our businesses and highlight uh, some of the some of those businesses that really have stepped up and the community that's stepped up. So it will be the celebration of all celebrations if we can pull this off. Marnie, attentively, where's it going to be at? At Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Okay. Yeah. I'm still trying to get the volume off on my iPad. Marnie, I have to say that with all the struggles of everything, I think you just gave the best example how in, in the election you can keep moving forward in the most, you know, distracting ways and you did so well in your presentation thank you i really i thank really you. It. yeah and, i um, tried to roll, roll through it but no, okay. you did really well um, i really wanted to be there in person i'm sorry it yeah yeah thank you. but i think the work that where the direction that you're having the chamber move is really it's refreshing it's great to see how you're just even within covid you've made some extremely um, sh you know, not extremely, but moved in the direction of with education, advocacy, and promotion. I, I look forward to seeing once, you know, we do all this work in person again, um, to expand the membership as you've been doing. And I'm, I'm just amazed with how much you um, and the Chamber's been able to do. So thank you for presenting to us. I really appreciate that. I appreciate your comment. Thank you. Councilman Harris. Yeah, Marty, thank you very much for the presentation. I know we've met before regarding the film commission opportunity, and I 
continue to agree with you that that's an outstanding um, opportunity for the city and the entire community just waiting to be had. So if there's anything that uh, the city or even me specifically on behalf of the city or even as a private person can do to assist, please consider me a resource. And I look forward to more conversations. That's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll, more information will come and, and we'll be happy to come and share with you if, if you would like. Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Marnie, uh, thanks for everything you've done this past year. I know we've worked a lot on the all the uh, acronyms and the webinars and stuff for our businesses, and uh, I, you guys have done a great job. I appreciate everything you've done to try to keep the, our local businesses going. Um, the only question I have for you is concerning our legislative adv advocate for the chamber. Which firm are we using out of Sacramento? Do you know off the top of your head? It is actually, it's the Advocacy Management Group uh, is the organization that runs the United Chamber Advocacy Network. And David Butler is the Executive Director of the organization, organization United Chamber Advocacy Network. So is he our, is he our lobbyist then? He is our lobbyist, yes. Okay. He is our, our representative. Okay, thank you. Marty, thank you for uh, coming and, uh, well, not coming, but showing up and, and presenting. Um, you, you defined pivoting as you were trying to kick your, your uh, iPad or whatever was on the floor. But uh, uh, first, again, yeah, thank you for uh, allowing me to present on behalf of Yuba City this morning. Uh, the Zoom was well attended. I think we got some good information out uh, about what, where the city was headed uh, and just you know, the opportunity to let people know there are, even though we're dealing with COVID, we are moving ahead. And uh, our city staff has done a phenomenal job uh, in securing uh, grants and doing other things, which is what was shared. Um, you know, you, you the vibe for coming out of the chamber has, has certainly evolved over the years. And I mean that in a very positive way. And I think I can speak on behalf of the council, certainly for myself. Uh, we value the partnership and look forward to uh, an even deeper relationship as we move forward in the coming years. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Boomgarten. I appreciate that. All right. Well, you all made that easy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to go ahead and move to, thank you again, Marnie. We're going to go ahead and move to item number two, which is COVID-19. Uh, it's a discussion and action on measures to mitigate the impacts of the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. The presentation is going to be by Brad McIntyre, our Community Services Director. Brad. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. I'm glad uh, Marnie used basketball as uh, to start off her presentation. Uh, by the way, I coached her, so you know it really wasn't. Uh, I am that old. Uh, it really it was a defensive issue. Okay, she didn't play much defense, but I hope she's still on. Um, I'm here this evening to uh, just give you a quick update as it relates to COVID-19. Currently, we uh, are in the purple tier, the widespread. Both counties um, uh, continue to stay there. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think there's a feeling that we are moving in the right direction. Uh, for our recreation staff, uh, uh, because we are in the purple tier, we are now uh, going to start offering uh, two different programs uh, for our youth. Uh, PE in the parks and soccer skills and drills. Uh, both of these programs are for children ages 7 to 12. Uh, both of them will be located at Blackburn Tally. Um, and then in addition, uh, we are starting a distant camp learning at being located at the senior center. Um, now, the first thing I always want to reiterate when we use it, utilize the senior center is that because we are in the purple tier, uh, we are not able to provide any services to our seniors, but once we go uh, down, hopefully soon to the red tier, we'll be, be able to offer uh, the senior center back to that particular group of individuals. The distant learning camp uh, starts next week, uh, as I mentioned, it's at the senior center. It is for first graders through sixth graders. The highlights of the camp are pretty much that staff will be able to help uh, students with their distant learning, but not do the work for them. Uh, provide indoor and outdoor activities, and we'll be able to utilize uh, Kingwood Park, which is right down the road. Uh, our park staff, uh, at the request 
and direction of council, but from the request of UBC Unified to begin opening up Gaucher Aquatic Park uh, to get some type of normalcy for our students uh, so that River Valley High School and UBC High School can participate in swim practice and then eventually some type of swim competition. Uh, it will take us about two to three weeks to heat the pool. Uh, our, parks, our park staff is working hard to prepare the facility as well. Uh, with all of our programs, programs uh, it is imperative to understand that we will be adhering to the COVID rules, uh, processes that we have done as we have worked ourselves up and down the tier. Um, pending uh, the hiring of part-time staff, uh, we are hoping to continue with uh, additional programming coming in the near future. Speaking of part-time staff, uh, if anyone is interested out there, we are looking for enthusiastic individuals that are interested in working in our youth sport programs, our camps, adult sports, and certainly at Gaucher Aquatic Park. And if anybody's watching this, uh, or if the parents are, you can certainly call 822-4650 to get additional information, or you can go to yubacity.net. That's a little plug. Can I uh, answer any questions at this time? Councilman Kirchner or Councilwoman Espindola? Uh, Brad, not a question, but just a comment. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting to hear that we're going to at least uh, partly open up the gap. And uh, were we, were we going to move forward the Feather River Parkway as, as well? Yes. Yeah, so in addition to the district asking to utilize Gaucher Aquatic Park, um, they also asked to use Feather River Parkway for their cross-country team, um, and we, we are doing that as well. Well, thank you for that, and, and this, is, this is huge, especially for those, those kids that uh, want, they want to return to some, some type of normalcy, and so um, thank you for, for doing this. All right, Brad, uh, thanks. It's great to see that uh, incrementally we're opening, doing so safely and in accordance, but uh, getting back to, to getting our kids active and, and engaging, I think it's great. So I appreciate the presentation and uh, look forward to more openings as uh, the days go by. Thanks. Likewise, thank you. Item three, public communication, appearance of interested citizens. Due to COVID-19, residents are encouraged to attend the city council meeting via web conference or submit comments by email. Consistent with the public health guidelines for social distancing, limited seating is available in the council chamber and in the Sutter room. If an attendee does not have a facial covering, one will be provided. Comments may be made either at the council chamber podium or from the Sutter room. Please participate via web conference or email if you are ill or have been exposed to COVID-19. I do know that I have one speaker card uh, but before we get to that, do we have any comments from the public, Sierra? No public comment. Okay. I do have a speaker card from uh, Mr. Manny Cardoza. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, uh, this is a county issue, but I'm hoping the city can assist in this for the support of the, for the citizens of Yuba City. As you read in the paper this morning, they had their first vaccinations this weekend. Uh, Midweek last week, they had sign-ups. They had over 1,000 people sign up within a couple of hours. And in the paper this morning, uh, they only administered 954 shots. So that means they threw away 46 shots. And they said they had a waiting list. And... Uh, I was thinking if you could, uh, you talked to Dr. Lou quite a bit, if you could mention to her that if there's a waiting list, instead of wasting these vaccinations, if they could start calling people and get them there so we can get rid of all these shots. Because if you just average 45 people a week uh, in 10 weeks, that's 450 people that doesn't get the shot. And I know there's people out there that want to get the shot. So if you just, I'm just asking the help of the council if you can pass this to Dr. Lou. And I know it's a county issue, but I don't want to wait another week and go to the county supervisor's meeting. But I'm going to still go see them also and make the comment. But if you can help me before that, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Any questions I'll be able to answer or anything like that? Questions or comments for Mr. Cardoza? Thank you, council. Okay. Uh, uh, Ms. Langley and I uh, attend a weekly meeting with Dr. Lou. We'll follow up and and uh, see if we can learn a little bit more about what may have happened out there and, and uh, convey the thought. Any other public comments? 
Mr. Burns, please, I'm sorry I didn't see you. Uh, you can consider one of those vaccines and went in the trash mine, so I don't want one. Um, but I wanted to talk about um, the Fifth Street Bridge, and I'm driving by there usually every day, and I saw it all graffitied up. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but uh, they graffitied all underneath the underpass, and then... Uh, when I was coming off the bridge the other day, they graffitied all, or someone graffitied all down the uh, the wall that has the buttes on it. And uh, but I, I'm not sure. When I glanced over there today, I thought maybe that uh, that was removed. But um, I'm just curious if uh, you're aware of that and what's what's being done, man. Because I I sure hate to see that taking place and it really irritated me to see that so it looks like we may have a response from mr mcintyre thank you yes uh we uh were aware of it and our park staff uh, one of the many things our park staff does is they do graffiti removal um, and so they started on it i believe monday uh, and finished it today as well, as I look at Matt Langley, our manager. So yeah, so we were aware of it. Um, and certainly we still want to encourage people to use the YC311 to let us know, because uh, certainly we, we know about the bridge, but any other graffiti as well. Um, but. Good good to hear that we were on it. Um, um, we'll, we'll, stay, we'll stay vigilant. And as uh, Mr. McIntyre mentioned, if you see something, you know, let us know. I'm, they're nodding their heads back there, so yes, sir. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Uh, through the mayor. Uh, first of all, Mr. Burns liked the beard. Just wanted to tell you that. But uh, Mr. McIntyre, my question was for you, and I may be completely off base on this one, but I had heard when we originally built the bridge that there was something that could be put on concrete that would prevent graffiti. And is that something that we could research and look because the kids are just going to keep tagging it day after day, year after year. But if there's a way that we could actually prevent it, does such a animal exist out there? There is. Um, as it relates specifically to the bridge, I could certainly make up an answer, but I don't have it. I'll look to Ms. Langley as far as the engineer of that. But, but to, to answer, so we do use... Uh, some uh, solution uh, within our parks uh, that helps minimize it, but it doesn't, it, it, it's just easier to paint over the graffiti part to answer it. So, so there is no magic okay. uh, wand to that. Okay, so there's nothing we can treat the concrete with. It just not that I'm aware of. There is a product that you can apply that makes it easier to clean off. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we did not put that on the bridge. Do I, um, I would have to check with Kevin Bradford to see if we did apply that. Um, but that is something, a treatment that we do put on concrete structures that are tagged often. Okay. just It was just a, a comment there, a question that we might look at somewhere down the line. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Mr. McIntyre. So just a follow-up to Mr. Um, Burns also, that we are going to have been looking at that. We know the people that tag it are very similar to ones that have done the sign in the past, and we're going to see what we can do about preventive measures down there as well. We just got to find electricity and stuff. All right, thank you, Chief. No public comment. Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and move to the consent account. <laughs> the consent calendar. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine and can be enacted in one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items prior to the time that the council votes on the motion, unless members of the city council, staff, or public request specific items to be discussed or removed from the consent calendar for individual action. Would anyone from the public like to speak on any of these items? If so, come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. I'm seeing none. Uh, consider a motion for approval of the consent calendar. Through the mayor, move to 
approve the consent calendar items four, five, six, and seven. Second. All right, I have a, a motion by Vice Mayor Shaw, second by Council Person Espindola to approve the consent calendar. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Seeing none, that uh, consent, calendars, consent calendar is approved unanimously. We will now move to item number eight um, under business items, the Hooper Ranch Estates subdivision map, phase one. This is final map approval. This will be presented by Ben Moody, our Development Services Director. All right, uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. So the item before you is in regards to the first phase of the final map for the Hooper Ranch Estate subdivision. And so the, um, the, the location in question is a 6.66 acre site that is north of Highway 20 along Hooper Road just west on the west side of Hooper Road between Jefferson and Monroe. So um, you can see it in the yellow box presented there. Um, zoomed in here with the aerial, it's a, an existing church facility that's surrounded by uh, relatively flat land um, that looks like it's been occasionally used for, for hay or for some different um, weed maintenance, but it's basically been a vacant piece, of par vacant piece of land that was developed in the county as a church. So I give you a, a general plan screenshot of the surrounding uses. Basically through the general plan, that area has been designated <clears throat> as low density residential. And so um, th what's proposed with the tentative subdivision map is to turn this into 21 residential lots and um, a two acre plus to, uh, to go around the church. And so what we have going on <clears throat> with this subdivision, so b back in August, uh, this subdivision, tentative subdivision map went to the planning commission for approval. And with that, they phased it. And so the phasing is shown here. You have, you have these dashed lines around here. You have phase one, and then you have phase two being the residential lots. What this really does is it sets, phase one sets it up for financing. And so it separates the church from the remainder of the property, then they're able to sell the remainder to a developer and the developer comes in, will come back to the city with a subdivision agreement and another phase two final map that will then split that remainder parcel into the um, subdivision, into the smaller subdivided lots, residential, and then dedicate that road right away. And so with this one, step one, um, it's pretty straightforward. With it, they'll dedicate the uh, the right of way along Hooper Road for the ultimate right of way, but the improvements will come with the future phase for the subdivision of two. So this is just a close up of the final map, a page of the final map product that actually gets recorded at the recorder's office that that will create that lot one and the remainder portion. So here's a quick process. Um, I got on the bullets, so tentative subdivision map. So back in August, the tentative subdivision map was approved with conditions of approval. With the final map submittal, we staff reviews the, the final map application, make sure it's um, consistent with the tentative map and with the conditions of approval. And then it, with it being a subdivision, we bring it to city council for approval of the map, the findings, acceptance of those dedications and authorized recordation. And then with that, the next step would be actually going to the recorder's office and having it recorded. So with this, I'm recommending that council adopt a resolution of the city council of the city of Yuba City approving the Hooper Ranch Estates phase one final map and accepting dedications of right of way and utility easements easements shown there on. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions from the council. We have a developer through the mayor, if I may. Please. Do we have a developer lined up? So my understanding is that there's a developer, um, River, uh, excuse me, Riverton, River, River Edge. They're out of uh, Sacramento area and they're working with a local design firm to uh, to do the improvement plans. But at this time, it's still, my understanding is still optioned. And so it has, the, the deal hasn't been um, finalized yet. Right. Thank you. Councilman Kirchner, Councilwoman Espindola. Thank you for that presentation, Ben. I, I don't have any questions. Thank you. 
not hearing anything. Okay, so I've been advised, and rightfully so, thank you from the city attorney, that because we have two members on teams, we need to uh, vote on this via a roll call, but first we'll need a motion. I will move to approve. Second. Through the mayor, before taking a vote, I'm sorry, would you move? Oh, the comment. <laughs> you threw a curveball at me. Any public comment? <laughs> no public comment. Okay. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we had a motion by Councilwoman Harris and a second by the vice mayor. Okay, by the vice mayor. I couldn't remember, sorry. Um, roll call vote, please. Council Member Harris? Yes. Vice Mayor Shaw? Yes. Council Member Espindola? I believe she had to step away for a moment. Council Member Kirchner? Yes. And Mayor Boomgarden? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, the motion passes for zero. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moody. Thank you. Moving to item number nine, landscape maintenance services contract, uh, RFP 21-01, presented by our finance director, Spencer Morrison. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, I am bringing formal bid 21-01 to award a contract for landscape maintenance services. Uh, we are joined tonight by... Uh, we have a few people in the audience. We have uh, Dan Stencil, thank you for being here, and crew. And we have uh, Parks and Grounds Superintendent Matt Langley, should you have any operational questions, and Director Brad McIntyre is also available. I also want to recognize the efforts of Accountant Kevin Rivera on my team for putting together this uh, formal bid. This was the, the largest of his uh, formal bid experience, so uh, he did a great job. City does count contract for routine landscaping uh, maintenance services for 88 locations throughout the city. Locations include walkways, bike paths, landscape maintenance districts, medians, and select city facilities. Finance staff informed 28 known landscape contractors of the request for proposal and mandatory pre-bid meeting. Uh, two legal notices were also placed in the Appeal Democrat. City intends to award the landscape maintenance contract to the highest scoring contractor. The initial term of the contract will be for one year with the option of five one-year extensions at the city's request. Five contractors attended the mandatory meeting and four proposals were received. Four city staff uh, members evaluated the contractor's proposals in three phases, uh, compliance with the RFP and experience and capability of the contractor, Reference checks and site reviews and cost were used in the scoring. As you can see in the final scoring, uh, ranked one was Landscapes by Stencil of Live Oak, California, uh, followed closely uh, by score, not so closely, but next closest was Vargas Landscapes of Sutter, California. Based on the scoring results, staff recommends awarding the landscape maintenance contract to Landscapes by Stencil of Live Oak, California in the amount of $350,568 for one year. The contract includes the option of five one-year extensions as approved by the city manager. May I entertain any questions? Councilman Kirchner or Councilwoman Espindola, any questions? Uh, Spencer, I have a, a question in the reference, uh, the gap between Vargas and Landscapes by Stencil, um, and even though Vargas was much less expensive, what were the concerns between the two and the ranking of it? So uh, in, the, in the scoring, Landscapes by Stencil did much better from the panel in the technical aspect, so responsiveness to the bid. Uh, this bid specifications uh, in general were um, was the probably the biggest uh, gap between the two and they were close enough in price that by the time we when we we factored in the cost it didn't give it didn't give Vargas uh, a, a very large advantage I see 
Is there any way to reduce the cost through stencil at all, if, if that's a conversation? No, Councilwoman. How do we how do we know when um, stencil employees are um, following standard work requirements? Do do they do like through the HR? Do they check for uh, background or drug test or how do they keep track of their employees when they're working for on um, city properties? We have uh, Mr. Stencil in the audience. If we'd like to bring him up and ask him that question. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Hi, thank you. Um, I, I don't do drug testing, to be honest with you, but we do. Uh, I, I'm very particular about who I hire. Mostly it's family and friends, um, people from my church. And if, if it's anybody outside of that, I, you know, I interview them and check their driver's license records and things like that. Um, but I haven't gone into drug testing just because I feel like I like to have that trust between people I hire. And I feel like if I do that, then they're going to feel like I don't trust them. And, and uh, so that's kind of how I feel. And that's kind of, you know, I, I've got the best crew I've ever had. I've got some guys that worked for me for over 10 years. Uh, I've got one guy that's worked for me for 15 years, one of my lead workers. And, and uh, to me, they're family. You know, they feel like family to me, a lot of my employees. And so I want to have that trust with them. So, any other questions? <laughs> it's kind of just telling you honestly how I feel. Okay, well, thank you. I, I can't see you. I wish I could um, see you um, with camera wise, but I apologize that um, we're in this circumstance. I was just curious to know how, how you also know how well your employees are doing the work when they're out at different locations in the city. Well, I, I, I check up on them, believe me. <laughs> I put a lot of miles on my truck checking on their work. And and uh, and you can ask my daughter. She works for me. She's sitting here, and I, I, I chew them out sometimes. Um, <laughs> sometimes they probably, I've, I've been told I'm a tyrant, but the job's got to get done. So. All right. Well, I, I'm not um, asking the questions that I haven't been asked by other community sure. members, so I appreciate your... Well, that's, well, that's why I'm here, because if there's questions, yeah. I want to answer them, for sure. This, this okay. contract means a lot to me, and, and the city means a lot to me, and this is really important. So. Well, I appreciate your um, the, the being open and honest and willing to answer the questions that <clears throat> sometimes sound, feel uncomfortable, but I think it's better just to be open about it and sure. have the conversation in a public setting like this. Sure. No, that's I, great. I, I thank you so much for, for doing the work. Okay, thank you. Mr. McIntyre. Yes, uh, Council Member Esmondola, in addition to everything that Mr. Stencil just said, uh, part of the job description that we have for our parks manager is to continually evaluate the landscape maintenance districts on a weekly basis. So like any good, uh, like any contract, the contract is only as good as uh, as we manage that contract um, and hold our contractors accountable. So um, I just wanted to make sure you understood that uh, those LMDs are being evaluated on a weekly basis as well from my staff. Thank you, Brad. I really appreciate that additional piece of information. Spencer, would it be possible to have Mr. Langley come to the podium? Absolutely, Mr. Langley would be pleased to come to the podium. Whichever one you like. I'm assuming you're the person that's uh, that's uh, you know evaluating Mr. Stencil's work, and I know Mr. Stencil's probably been with the city for a while now. Uh, yeah, do we have any issues with their work at all? Uh, occasionally, a few minor issues, but you know, everybody has to hire new employees, and sometimes they think they can get away with stuff, but they can't. Okay, so you have no as the as the uh, as the the chief uh, evaluator of the services. You're satisfied with the work that Mr. Stencil and his crew has done. Yep, very happy. Excellent, thank you, sir. Any questions for for Mr. Langley? Okay. Bring it to the council for any other questions. Yes, Sean. I 
have no questions. Oh. Okay, uh, through the mayor. Um, Mr. Stencil, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I just uh, wanted to kind of bring this back around. I got a couple of questions, but you know, we have to remember as a council, we're not the employer. We utilize, you know, Mr. Langley and such to do the, the supervision and would never want to get into your business, Mr. Stencil, and tell you how to manage your employees because that's not our role. Um, the question that I have gets back to actually a maintenance issue, and we've covered this once before. Uh, I come down Stabler Lane uh, daily, and at one point there was a question of who took care of the sucker vines on the crepe myrtles and different things up in that. Is that a parks and maintenance, or is that under yours, Mr. Stencil? Okay, because I know it got resolved. I'm just figured I'd take the opportunity to figure out who was doing it. Okay, well, I appreciate you guys doing it, and uh, the areas you guys service, is, it looks really good, so thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Stencil, thank you. I, I, I uh, know you've been uh, doing work for the city, and we appreciate the, the work. And uh, as Mr. Langley says, obviously there's going to be occasions where, where new people are in and all that stuff. I think we all have, all have experienced that. So with that, uh, and thank you for being here tonight, too, and answering the questions. With that, uh, um, I entertain a motion. Through the mayor. I move that we award a contract to Landscapes by Stencil of Live Oak in the amount of $350,568, uh, 350568 for one year for landscape maintenance services of landscape, landscape maintenance districts, landscape islands, and selected city facilities with the option of five one-year extensions and authorize the city manager to approve the extensions. And I second that. Okay, I have a motion um, by Vice Mayor Shaw, a second by... Uh, Councilman Harris, uh, may I have a roll call, please? Through the mayor. Oh. <laughs> so, so sorry, again, just no, an opportunity I, for public. You know, my left-hand man just told me. Do we have any public comment on this? No public comment. Thank you. Oh, we do. So I, I was looking over this uh, before I sat down and already made in my mind, I mean, excuse me, as I sat down, uh, that I wanted to comment on this number nine. And I didn't realize that the uh, owner was here. I don't know him. But uh, every time I see their crew around town, and my wife also with me, we comment on how great a job they're doing. So I think they're doing an excellent job. And I never see his crew standing around. As an employer, that is rare, okay? And drug testing, we don't do it either. Uh, in this day and age, you might not have any employees out there. So that's my comment. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Okay, I've asked for public comment. We've received it. We don't have any additional. We have a motion and a second. And uh, so now we will take our roll call vote. Vice Mayor Shaw? Aye. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Espindola? Aye. Council Member Kirchner? Aye. Mayor Boomgarden? Yes. All right. Congratulations, Mr. Stencil. We'll look forward to our continued partnership. Okay, item number 10 city sponsorship requests. This will be presented by Sierra Wakefield, our city clerk administrator. I promise to ask for public comment on this one. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have the privilege this evening to present to you the current sponsor sponsorship requests. As you know, our community sponsorship policy requires, hold on, requires that all requests be approved by city council in a public meeting. And so since we're all here, I decided to present to you the two requests that have been submitted. The first, from Beale Military Liaison Council in the amount of $2,500. 
and the second from Yuba Center Arts Council in the amount of $2,500. For your reference, uh, these are the, avail the available funds that are in uh, the accounts that were budgeted for uh, potential sponsorships. And so with that, if you don't have any questions, I will turn it over to you for review and consideration. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Councilman Kirchner, Councilwoman Espindola. Um, I'd like to say something uh, briefly. Uh, thank you for that, Sierra. Uh, the BMLC uh, is very near and dear uh, to, to myself and my family. Uh, we were introduced to the organization four years ago. And the relationships that you make uh, as an honorary commander uh, continue uh, long after uh, your the people you're involved with leave Bill, and so there is a real uh, value and importance to this organization. And um, I'm, I'm I'm glad that we're considering uh, sponsoring them as a city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. No, no comment. Okay, gentlemen. Sean. Other, no, I don't know what has been said before me, but of course I, I read the staff report and definitely in favor of uh, offering some support to these uh, both uh, very good organizations who contribute a great deal to, to our community. And through the mayor, just uh, echo that. Uh, both these organizations are, are vital to the community and uh, I think he's a reasonable request. So. My only comments are uh, we began accepting uh, these requests and then uh, had to take a timeout for COVID along with other timeouts we took on certain financial matters. So these requests have been out there for a bit, and I know that the, the two agencies that we're con uh, considering this evening have both uh, been very patient in awaiting uh, us to take this item up. So I appreciate their pa patience. Uh, this is the first of the new uh, process of, of having the full council uh, take a look at uh, community contributions, if you will. And uh, I think it, it, it bodes well for the future as we look at you know, a, a finite amount of dollars to spend and making sure we're going to those organizations that truly give back directly to the city of Yuba City. Uh, and to, uh, importantly, for Beal, of course, and for the arts, uh, both of those uh, organizations have demonstrated over the years that of their uh, value uh, to our residents. So with that, uh, do we have any public comment? I promised you I'd remember. No public comment. Okay. All right. I'd entertain a motion on item number 10. To the mayor, I move to approve. I second. I have a motion by Councilman Harris, a second by the vice mayor. Shaw on item number 10. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Harris? Yes. Vice Mayor Shaw? Yes. Council Member Espindola? Yes. Council Member Kirchner? Yes. Mayor Boomgarden? Uh, yes, and those uh, requests are passed unanimously. Thank you, Sierra, for the report as well. Okay, item 11 uh, City Manager's Employment Agreement. But I'll take a few moments uh, and uh, discuss uh, the appointment of our, our city manager, which has been a long process um, for the city and for them. Um, it started with the hiring of a uh, recruitment firm, MRG. Uh, Don Bullwinkle, Sherry Concolino uh, were the, the two individuals that were responsible for uh, engaging with us on this recruitment, this executive recruitment. Um, they were uh, screened as a, uh, as a group and approved by the council. They began the recruitment process. We ended up with 113 applicants for the city manager, which uh, is a, a very robust applicant pool. Uh, that was pared down by MRG through their uh, re review process down to about 40. Uh, at that point, uh, an ad hoc committee of myself and the vice mayor uh, began screening applications. Uh, we narrowed uh, the list down, presented that to the full council, 
And uh, from that list, uh, came away with uh, four finalists, if you will. Uh, from the, the four finalists, we, uh, as I've mentioned in previous releases, put them through a very extensive review process, which included, of course, the screening by the MRG, screening um, of the applications by the ad hoc committee, uh, the interviews by a peer group of, of uh, county administrators and city managers um, outside and in, in the area, a community panel made up of the different leaders that uh, we felt represented the sectors of our uh, economy here in Yuba City, and uh, of course our department heads who uh, are obviously very, very involved with, uh, with the uh, activities and the service provided by the city. We also employed the uh, use of a panel of past mayors uh, just to get an additional set of eyes. The city contracts with a gentleman by the name of Juan Lopez who does uh, organizational dynamics uh, and we had uh, him also vet out uh, these uh, candidates. And at the end, uh, the full council had the opportunity to interview the candidates. From that process, um, a, uh, uh, the selection that we're recommending tonight uh, for consideration by the council is uh, William Dave Vaughn. William Dave Vaughn, or we'll be calling him Dave as he likes to be ref uh, referred to, uh, comes to us uh, from Southern California. However, his roots are extremely deep. Uh, throughout the Yuba City and uh, in the region. He has served on numerous boards uh, in leadership positions. He brings a, um, a demonstrated leadership, um, professional leadership, has the ability to communicate coll and, and collaborate not only with uh, the folks he works with and lead them, but also with other groups that he would be interacting with. Um, we feel that uh, this is the best choice for the city from the applicants we received. And uh, at this point, I'd like to go ahead and do two things. Number one um, is ask for comments from um, the ad hoc committee that began the process uh, with Vice Mayor Shaw, but I also need to um, also um, bring the, the city attorney up, but after Mr. Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you summed it up quite well, and I would just like to thank you for your leadership during this uh, with the ad hoc committee and all of the 21 uh, different people that served on those uh, uh, panels that these candidates went through because each of those cared enough about our city to give up a day of their time and came in with an open mind and gave us very candid feedback. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, the trust and the support from the fellow council members uh, because we had to operate very uh, efficiently and nimbly as an ad hoc committee and uh, to get through the process or we would have been six months down the line trying to do this instead of uh, a little over three. Um, it really was an amazing process when you go through this with 26, including the council, different people that all came to the same conclusions that, that we did through this process, process, and that was what was the best fit for Yuba City and what we needed in the future. And um, I know our recruitment firm talked about they were impressed with the process, and uh, they looked at us many times and said, are you guys sure you can do this? And the mayor and myself like, We'll get it done. That means, you know, another couple of days of he and I meeting and moving things forward and 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 meeting their timelines. So um, again, thank you for the count, fellow council members for your trust and for uh, being a part of this. And I look forward to us as a council collectively making this decision together. So thank you. Mr. City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you know, this has been a quite an extensive process that the city has been going through. Uh, our office has also gone through an extensive process as part of our component of this. We do have one minor remaining item that needs to be addressed. We think it's a minor issue. So if the council is inclined to approve, we would recommend that the, uh, the approval of the agreement this evening be contingent upon the city attorney's confirmation that that minor issue is addressed. And if it is, uh, you, that'll be confirmed by my signature on the resolution that's attached to your staff report this evening. Thank you for that. Um, 
At this point, before we go ahead and uh, entertain any motions, just any other comments from any of the council? Through the mayor, if I may. Yes. Just wanted to take a couple minutes, couple uh, seconds to uh, thank everybody who you already mentioned, including the both uh, of you, uh, staff, all the citizens who came forward to help us out with this very, very important decision. I know it took a lot of time. No one, and everyone took it um, quite seriously, and it's um, uh, very encouraging to see that process. We've received many comments, and we'll probably receive many, uh, many more of how thorough thoroughly the process was. And um, definitely we'll, uh, looking forward to congratulating and working with Mr. Vaughn. Thank you. Uh, through the mayor? Please. Um, I would like to uh, express the, uh, my appreciation for the hard work that the ad hoc committee uh, took on with all of this. This must have been an enormous amount of work, so thank you for that. Um, I got in at the very end of this, uh, see, so you, you folks did all the hard work, but um, I respect the process, and I look forward to working with our new city manager. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the work. Um, the ad hoc committee did a tremendous amount of labor um, in bringing the people to the table, and I... Um, Short towards the end, um, Councilman uh, Kirshner and I assisted with the hiring process of closing, um, as you would say, closing the deal. And so we all contributed in um, the process. It was quite thorough. Um, I would like to thank um, MRG and um, our city attorney and also our deputy city attorney, Pam Lee, for negotiating the final contract and um, Shannon, our city attorney as well. Um, and in all of this, I, I do want to say a special thank you to our executive team because they also gave a lot of um, time, energy in placing um, or helping us make this decision. And um, I welcome Dave Vaughn, um, a familiar face, and I look forward to um, Seeing what the future brings us together. Thank you. Okay, do we have any comments from the public on this item? No public comment here. Mr. Burns. Well, I sure wish more of the public was here, but uh, so on the public's behalf. Um, from my perspective, uh, I can see that there was a lot of work done, and uh, I appreciate that. And um, it's a, it's been quite a uh, whittling down. So, and I'm not surprised that the uh, pool of people was so large because it looks to be a pretty lucrative job. And uh, from uh, the private sector perspective, I mean, it's it's one handsome salary, okay? So um, I'm just saying that I, I believe the man or whoever would have had that job needs to hit the ground running and, and earn their keep because uh, he's extremely well paid. So that's what I believe. We'll make him earn his pay. Okay, uh, entertain a motion in concert with the recommendation from the city attorney. Yes, sir. With that in mind, I would uh, recommend we move. Or, uh, I would move to approve the contract with Mr. Vaughn, uh, contingent on uh, the aforementioned stipulations. I would second. Okay, and th would that also include the adjustment and the resolutions for the salary adjustment? Yes, sir. A and B. Okay, thank you. Hey, I have a, uh, a motion by Councilman Shaw, excuse me, a motion by Councilman Harris, a second by Vice Mayor Shaw. I have a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Vice Mayor Shaw? Yes. Councilmember Espindola? Yes. Councilmember Kirchner? Yes. Mayor Boomgarn? Yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to take a few moments. I wish Matt would, had stayed here. Um, and you know, she, she hates this, um, but now 
you can officially start counting the days, <laughs> Diana. But uh, um, and, and I'll I'll send something special to Matt because I know this was a lot of work for you over the the second go around, and uh, we all know that there's been a lot thrown at you, and uh, we probably cannot say thank you enough, and we'll probably continue to say thank you and and. But we also want to acknowledge Matt, because I'm sure uh, a lot of what happens with uh, you and your job affected you and, and your daughter as well. So appreciate appreciate everything you've done for us uh, very much. And um, like I said, I'm sure that uh, we'll be saying more about that over the next uh, few days. Uh, Mr. Vaughn is scheduled to uh, begin work on February 22nd. And uh, in... When he does, uh, we will have a pretty robust onboarding program for him uh, to make sure that he does hit the ground on a sprint. And uh, having the connections he has in the community and his familiarity with the city of Yuba City and the region, uh, I think that's a huge, uh, huge advantage for not only uh, him, but for us as well. So. And I do want to follow up. Uh, Councilwoman Espindola did mention it, and I failed to. Uh, our city attorney and uh, Pam Lee from his office and others uh, also participated in the process and uh, in, in getting the deal done, as did Councilman Kirchner and Councilwoman Espindola uh, in the, uh, the contract negotiation. So appreciate you two um, for the work you did bringing the deal to, its, uh, to, to us today. All right. Future agenda items, uh, items num item number 12. This is the opportunity to discuss with the interim city manager uh, about items that came up in the meeting this evening that you would like to have brought back to the council at a later date. Are there any comments related to the agenda items that may have come in during the meeting also? No public comment. Okay, anything from the council on future agenda items? No, sir. Not here seeing or hearing any. Okay, following report, we're on reports and communications. Following reports and communication items are provided for the council's in information. No action can be taken on items under this section unless the council agrees to include it on a subsequent agenda. We will start with tonight's city council reports with council member Espindola. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's nice to be the first because um, then I get the most of attention from my colleagues, I think. If not, well, the community will listen. Um, I really, um, I'm truly happy about the assignments uh, with the new committees. Um, I'm assigned to the Bi-County Homeless uh, JPA, the Yuba City Sutter County Homeless Advisory Ad Hoc Committee. Those are um, two committees that go hand in hand. We have had no meetings. Uh, since the last two weeks. Uh, the next is a, a new committee that I'm on, Feather River Air Quality Management District. This committee meets uh, every other month. Uh, the North Sac Valley Integra Integrated um, Regional Water Management Group. Um, no meetings have been held as of yet. The Regional Water Authority, I have a meeting the following week and, um, or I think in two weeks. Uh, and the uh, Sutter Butte Flood Control, I have a meeting the following week. I'm the alternate with the local agency formation district, um, the countywide RDA Oversight Board, and the Yuba Sutter Transit Authority. I have no state committee re uh, reporting at this moment, but I did participate in a local community event, which I was really happy to, to have been invited um, by um, a few of the Board of Trustees through Yuba College. Yuba College Community College uh, had a strategic planning meeting that they hosted and, um, and have done this regionally throughout the whole district. What they're looking at is what are Yuba College's weaknesses and opportunities. And I think this ties closely to what Marty was saying earlier about the workforce. We had a long conversation about the community look, uh, workforce. Some of the local opportunities that potentially may be identified is an expansion of a four-year degree program in the areas of uh, regional nurse or teaching. Those are uh, two that are potentially going to happen. One of the concerns of why this is uh, being brought up is because community members in Yuba Center are less likely to hold degrees 
um, when compared to California residents. Um, our community has 17% of the area residents hold a bachelor's degree or higher. Let me say that again. 17% of our service area residents hold a bachelor's degree or higher as compared to 33% of Californians. So there's a need for a higher level of education for certain jobs, in particular with registered nursing and teaching. Um, those two particular jobs are going to have voids in the future. And right now, as we know, with COVID, there's a strong need for healthcare. Other potential um, uh, trainings that we talked about is um, fast tracking and doing some sort of hybrid in-person or virtual design programs with internships in specific areas where construction with all the development that possibly is happening in our areas, you know, with those specific trades and services um, that was discussed, agricultural science and manufacturing, there was discussion about COVID specialists and working closer with business entities to understand what that labor market may look like in the years to come. So I look forward to working with Yuba Community College in their future meetings to help um, strengthen the workforce in our community. And um, lastly, I wanna um, I, uh, acknowledge that this month is Black History Month. And I found this great letter that was written um, 44 years ago on February 10th, 1976. And it was written by uh, former President uh, Ford. And I found his words to be very um, poignant and time um, still pretty much holds true. So I'm going to read this quick letter that he wrote in 1976, 44 years ago. In the bicentennial year of our independence, we can review with admiration the impressive contributions of Black Americans to our national life and culture. 100 years ago, to help highlight these achievements, Dr. Carter G. Woodson founded the Association for the Study of Afro-American Life and History. We are grateful to him today for his initiatives, and we are richer for the work of his organization. Freedom and the recognition of individual rights are what our revolution was all about. They were ideals that inspire our fight for independence, ideals that we have been striving to live up to ever since. Yet it took many years before these ideals became a reality for black citizens. The last quarter century has fully witnessed significant strides in the full integration of black people into every area of national life. In celebrating Black History Month, we can take satisfaction from these recent progress and the realization of the ideals envisioned by our founding fathers. Ideals envisioned by our founding fathers. But even before then, this we can seize the opportunity to honor the often, too often neglected, excuse me, too often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every area of our endeavor throughout our history. He finally says, I urge my fellow citizens to join me in tribute to the Black History Month and to the message of courage and perseverance it brings to all of us. And this, these were the words of former 38th President Gerald Ford. And they still hold true today, and we still have work to do, and I appreciate everyone. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Council Member Harris. Yes. Um, Primarily, my, my meetings consisted of uh, SACOG related uh, items so far. I did have that meeting, as mentioned before, with Senator Nielsen advocating for the uh, SACOG Green Means Go program, which focuses on um, assisting uh, on a regional basis areas in their jurisdiction regarding infill, providing infrastructure, and housing opportunities. I will have the, we're basically doing a uh, barometer check and a, a refresher on. Um, that topic with the uh, legislators as we come into this next funding round and for the budget for the state. I'd have the same uh, type of phone call um, tomorrow morning with Assemblyman Gallagher. Um, I also, as a member of the Land Use and Natural Resources Committee on SACOG, we had our first orientation meeting for new members today. So I'm looking forward to being a part of that discussion as it continues. As a member of Regional Housing Agency, I do have a, I did attend the first meeting, it was more of an orientation meeting as well. Have a uh, 
for lack of a better term, a ride along schedule with with Gus later this week. So we're going to we're going to jump in the car and we're going to put eyeballs on all the projects they have pending and they're hoping for. Um, school liaison. Um, that, that meeting is it doesn't happen until February 11th, the first uh, quarter of this year. You have a set of transit. Uh, the big the big topic, of course, is the site selection is in progress um, for their new uh, facility. We uh, Yuba City is uh, fortunate enough to have one of the three finalist uh, locations in, um, within the city, so we're working on advocating for that. Uh, not only you know, you, like I had mentioned before in the meeting, we have two different hats. You know, we we're on the boards. So we have the the regional aspect, so we all we want the project to succeed regardless. But then, of course, we're a little bit biased. I will admit. Um, in that trying to put uh, as much light as possible on the positive aspects of bringing that facility here to Yuba City. Uh, Yuba Center Arts, so they're very happy. I'm sure they will be regarding the uh, contribution we made today. They continue to do some very good work, particularly in the wake of COVID or in the midst of COVID. Very busy. A uh, lot of opportunities for uh, more, more culture uh, virtually, in some cases, uh, Distantly in, in, in person, uh, they do a, they do a great job. Uh, the main thing in progress right now is a a donation of the Sutter Theater. And Dave, help me. I'm drawing a blank on the organization. The donated it's donating the theater. That's it. Um, thank you. Um, so they're donating to the Sutter Theater. So we're going to increase uh, some budget and some staff and more opportunities. And they're going to and they also have some worker space for artists in Yuba City over there by the old frame shop, Lee's Canton area, um, for some uh, local artists to, to do their work. And then, of course, the, uh, the theater itself will be a place to display their, their wares and have some uh, performance. So a bigger footprint on, on this side of the river, when we're excited about that. So many things on the horizon, um, COVID notwithstanding, but we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Kirk Churn. Mr. Mayor, uh, first, first and foremost, uh, last, uh, the last uh, two Thursdays and Fridays, uh, I attended, uh, I didn't virtually attended the training that the city provided uh, through the cities. It was very informative. I'm uh, looking forward to getting uh, to work with the different committees. The animal services uh, committee uh, meeting was canceled and postponed until April. Um, one of the uh, committees I am on, am on is the mosquito abatement and so i took it uh took the opportunity yesterday to go out there and meet with the manager stephen abshire who gave me the uh the nickel tour and that was very informative and i look forward to working along with him and the other committees uh our first meeting with the mosquito abatement will be a week from thursday and that's all i have to report thank you sir uh, vice mayor shaw Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it has been a busy couple of weeks. Um, I'll start with the uh, U.S. Center Transit Authority. I, uh, I've got the honor of chairing that uh, this next year. Uh, as uh, Councilmember Harris said, you know we've the big the big thing right now is a next generation um, uh, facility, and we are fortunate enough to have uh, one of the three finalists. Uh, selections and uh, they will be coming to us at the next board meeting in February um, with presenting things and I want to thank Miss Langley and uh, Councilmember Harris for for setting down we've already had a, a good meeting uh, some good discussions and uh, they definitely know Yuba City is interested uh, but we got to see what the report looks like so uh, that could be a, a great booster for us here in, in our city because it would move those jobs right across the river, you get the sales tax revenue, all these other added benefits, and it's right on their route. So it's, uh, I think it's a good fit. We'll see where it goes, and I appreciate uh, uh, my fellow council member for helping me think outside of the box. So uh, that's that's why we're here. Uh, the next one's the RWMA. Uh, again, I get the privilege of being the chair of the RWMA. Uh, the big idea that's coming from that this year is we will be presented with a uh, new JPA. Uh, as it uh, reinvents itself because of uh, 1383. And uh, so that's going to be uh, the big item coming. So probably uh, I would expect by March or April we should start seeing the JPAs come before us because they have to go before all the municipalities uh, to get approved. And uh, they're looking at uh, hopefully bringing it back to the RWMA by uh, midsummer. 
Uh, also um, was on uh, Mungisek. We had a, uh, a a workshop this past Friday. Uh, gleaned a lot of information there. Uh, and then to follow that up, uh, I've also on the Yuba Center e uh, Economic Development Corporation and really getting that nexus of how these two organizations uh, can better serve our community. And I'm looking forward to following up with uh, Mr. Broom with some of the ideas that uh, Councilman Harris, you'd brought forward when you were on that last year as mayor. And, um, and then um, seeing how we can start bringing some things to Yuba City. Uh, the EDC is gonna be going through a rebranding. Um, love the idea of rebranding and telling the story. My only uh, comments to them were make sure that we put some marketing behind it so the world knows uh, exactly what they do are doing as well. Um, let's see. Uh, Ms. Langley, you're going to hear it many times over the next few weeks. Uh, I definitely think you have earned the title of Master Cat Herder, uh, herder because you have done an excellent job of herding all the cats that you've had to herd, uh, herd during this time. You've served us well. Uh, thank you to your family for... I know the numerous hours that they have loaned you to us because none of us ever saw COVID coming. None of us saw none of the stuff that we've been hit with coming at us, but you have been professional, a gem, and I just want to extend uh, personal thanks to you and your family because um, you, you deserve a ton of accolades and I'm looking forward to continuing working with you going forward. And I know you want to get back to your normal position. So, uh, but I just want to say thank you. Uh, the last two things, uh, Bill, uh, military liaison, I've started that process to me. That's been, uh, quite refreshing, uh, because of, uh, veteran in the air force that was stationed at Bill. That's, uh, uh, like the connection there. And then the arts, I did attend the open house for the theater and, um, a lot of good things there. I'm looking for the revitalization of that. Uh, they were talking about possibly being able to open by April time frame and start having things down on Plumas Street in the uh, black box. You guys will understand when you go there what the black box is. And, um, you know, it's uh, looking forward on a personal note of, uh, you know, getting in and supporting them how uh, my family and I can. So that's uh, my report for tonight, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you. Uh, first thing, uh, I've got several things here, but uh, first thing is I want to thank the, the fellow council members. Uh, obviously, uh, you guys are attending a heck of a lot of meetings and bringing a lot of stuff back. So I know you're representing the city well, and, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of time. And uh, all of you are all in on all that. So all of you, uh, thanks. Also, I think it's important to reach out and thank the city staff. Uh, for their response during this, late, this latest wind event where we saw a lot of things going on. Uh, a police department, fire department, public works. Uh, I hope I'm not missing any that were contributing, but uh, that was a big deal. And uh, there was a lot of stuff going on that, that night and a, a lot of great service provided to the citizens. So I really much appreciate that. Uh, things that I've been involved with, uh, another shout I hate to use the word shout out, but I just did. Department scenarios. Um, I want to thank the, our department heads. We tasked them uh, with uh, presenting to us ahead of a goal setting session that we're uh, going to be involved with, with the things that kept them up at night. Uh, what, are the, what are the vital few that we really need to be considering um, as we move ahead in 20, uh, 2021, 2022? And uh, very professional um, presentations. Um, you know, it was the needs, not the wants. Um, a lot of needs out there, um, but it's good to have seen, uh, have some heads up with, with that. So uh, kudos out to our department heads for their very, again, very professional presentations. As far as meetings, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, weekly with Dr. Liu, the public health director, to get updates on uh, the latest from um, public health and the California Department of Public Health. Not always the most encouraging uh, news when you hear about, you know, the the, the dilemma of uh, vaccinations. Uh, in addition to what uh, former Councilman Cardoza mentioned, just the, the the uncertainty of getting vaccinations. 
uh, for those who want them. And, you know, not everybody wants them, but for those that do, uh, not having a sufficient supply uh, and having a rollout has been very problematic. Um, participated with the vice mayor on some interviews for uh, our commissions. Uh, so we'll be continuing to move through that process. As far as meetings, uh, I, the committees I assigned myself to haven't been as uh, busy as others, but I do, I'll be um, attending a SACOG meeting with uh, Councilman Harris tomorrow. I will also be with Councilman Harris on a regional housing authority uh, meeting coming up this week. Very pleased to say that we have submitted the city's uh, and the county's master tax exchange agreement for consideration and review by Sutter County. Uh, major step that I hope uh, we get we hit, get to the goal line very quick. And at the end of this week, we're actually uh, reinstating the Intergovernmental Relations Committee, which is um, uh, two members from the city getting together with two members from Sutter County um, to just continue to work uh, as closely as possible in the, in the public's best interest. With that, uh, that concludes our meeting. Uh, a lot of stuff covered tonight. Uh, again, um, yeah, please know that that uh, it, the city staff uh, is really working hard. We we uh, I mentioned this today, uh, and I know sometimes I take a beating because I, I want to acknowledge the city staff, but um, they really are working hard, and they really are providing service uh, in a time when it's very difficult to do so uh, with COVID and other things that come along. So I just uh, I want to thank them. Um, for the work that they do on the behalf of, of the city. So with that, we'll go ahead and close the meeting.